Scooby the Homestead Adventure Kid, Stacy's daughter, and Rose of Sharon Homestead, my mom. And then this is my grandma Lang. And then we're going on an adventure today to get our new sheep. Where are we going, Ruby? UP. The UP, the Upper Peninsula, Michigan. Yep. What kind of sheep are you getting? Waters. Cheese waters. Yeah. And you get to see Lake Superior for the first time. Yes. All right. See you later. Well, everybody, we just crossed the Michigan-Wisconsin border. We are in the UP. Right, Ruby? <laughs> Ruby's never been in another state, so she's happy. Oh, they're so cute. Now that little tiny one, the little white one, is lie down. The one that had that oh, the little one, yeah. Look at her. She does her job, doesn't she? Upper Michigan, boy, what a look at them, aren't they pretty? That dog, she trains them, I guess. Which one of these are gay? I think I have to ask, I, they're all for I think we're gonna get the bigger white one and the bigger, bigger gray uh, brown one. They mark them for, <coughs> I think that, that's one that had a broken leg, so. Oh, I can see it bent. Yeah, yeah. All right, guys, we're gonna go ahead and pick our sheep here. Oh, trying to get them to the bale on the back of the. What a good dog, ain't it? Hey, sweeties. Little step at Culver's and then home. New babies, gotta wait. Ruby, what do you think of Houghton, Michigan? Awesome. It's a beautiful town, isn't it? We didn't know it was this big, did we? And there's a big bridge. A big bridge for and the big one. Look at all the way up there. Yeah, yeah. Lots of big hills. Mm -hmm. Are you ready? We gotta go, we gotta take a potty break. It's a four hour drive. You ready? All right, Ruby. What time is it? Three o'clock. Four o'clock. We still have what, three and a half hours or something like that on the road? Yeah. It's been a long day, hasn't it? Yeah. All right. Wish we could fly. <laughs> fly. Hey, Ruby. Look at folks what time it is. We left at eight o'clock this morning and we're just about ready to turn on our road. We got two miles to get home. We just dropped Graham off, didn't we, Bug? We're on a back old dirt road here, so. It, it was a long trip, wasn't it? Yeah. And as a matter of fact, it's so long, it's nighttime, we're gonna get put some water and hay in the back of the truck and yeah. we're gonna leave the babies in there for tonight, aren't we? Yeah. And we're gonna go and get some supper and we are going to veg out and sleep real good tonight, aren't we? Mm -hmm. I'm going to go ahead and start the video up again tomorrow morning. Yeah. And we will show everybody the little darlings that we picked up today, won't we? Yes. So till tomorrow, yeah. we'll edit that in.
Ruby. It's 9.30. We got home from our trip, eight hours on the road to get them sheepies, right? And what happened? Mm. You either twisted or broke your ankle. Yeah. Mama made a splint, right? Mm -hmm. Through all the screams and the pain. And we came to the ER. And you're in good sorts? Yeah, right now, right? And the sheep are still in the truck, aren't they? Yeah. And we're hoping and praying that it wasn't too much stress on them. We were going to let them sleep the night in the truck, but they had to go for another ride with us to the ER, didn't they? Oh, dear. Right? Mm -hmm. Just in case the folks are wondering, I improvised, made a good splint out of cardboard and uh, medical tape, and the nurses praised me very highly. Didn't they, Daddy? They did. All right, guys. Here's to hoping that there's no breaks, right, Ruby? Mm -hmm. Well, good morning, Ruby. Good morning. So what is the verdict? Was it a break or a, a sprain, torn, torn ligament? What was it? Um, it was, Louder, honey. It wasn't a break. It was, I think it was a torn ligament. Yeah, it was. It was a torn ligament. But they were scared because the inside of the bone on the other side had a spot on it. And they said if you can't put pressure on it within three days that you got to go back, right? So we're going to continue our journey on on our sheep adventure because the sheep are still in the truck. Yeah. Because we actually had to take the sheep last night yeah. to the ER because we didn't have time to get them out because this happened, right? So, Mama's off to take care of that. You stay on the couch here, okay? Mm -hmm. Love your little Bobo. <laughs> and don't be up walking around. Just relax and watch Dr. Paul, okay? Yeah. Okay, folks, I am about ready to take the new sheep out of the truck. But before I do that, as I'm grabbing them, um, I want to treat them for parasites. Um, I don't, the lady said that uh, they were all treated. Um, a couple months ago but this is just a protocol I do when something enters my farm so I can say I have done it this day you know here we go and we're gonna be checking eyes um, for anemia and just to, to get a gauge on if they have a parasite load or not I am using a basic horse wormer okay folks now with sheep horse wormer has to be within 50 pounds of the weight of the sheep so I'm just going to do 100 pounds so sheep are probably you know I picked them up yesterday they're probably from 55 50 pounds to about 75 pounds so I'm gonna do a hundred for all of them it's not gonna hurt them they have a little more and you can look here but be very careful because this is made for horses if you were to give them this you could kill them so each one of these notches is a hundred in between of these okay so I'm just gonna go one notch and you have to make sure you get it up to the zero and get the paste up to the tip before you do this because if it's down here and you do it they're not getting enough so I'm going to go ahead and administer this one in the, and then I'm going to put it uh, towards the back of each one of their mouths I don't have my little camera girl here today because of her ankle so I'm going to try to do this myself and see if I can uh, do the camera stuff I will however uh, show you how to check the eyes um, for anemia okay folks my husband is gracious to help me here no, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to check the eyes. So all we're going to do is, see if I can get the camera here, is pull that lid down. And we're looking for nice pink color. And they're very pink, very beautiful color. Okay, oh, oh. And I'm going to go ahead and do worm now. All right, folks, with my husband's help, I'm gonna go ahead and deworm. I'm gonna try to do this with one hand. You're just going to, can you hold her head? Yeah, just hold her whole head there. There you go. Stick it in the side of the mouth, make sure to get to back. You wanna make sure this gets to their rumen and inject that in there. Oh, that's yummy. This is apple flavor, so this isn't too pungent for them. And they are so cute. And we're gonna put them in so that they're not stressed as little as possible. Got the girls, I gotta pick up that pail, broke. That's my maggot bucket for any folks that are wondering. 
in the summertime, dead animals or rotten meat go in there and it makes maggots and uh, free food for the chickens. Sheep are gonna get to know each other here. They all get to know each other real quick. What? All right, folks, I got uh, the new sheep and our sheep, some water and some hay. They're a little bit skittish. They're gonna be for a few days. Now these uh, are Shiviats. I try to pronounce that the right way, um, but if I'm not, I apologize. But that's how um, most people I know in our area pronounce it. Shiviat sheep. I always just remember a Chevy truck and uh, go with it that way. Um, these are um, just springlings this past uh, season. So they too will have a long um, three to four inch uh, fiber when it's said and done. And they're just a little bit upset because we got the dogs going around. Um, as you've seen in the prior clip, these, these uh, sheep were worked with dogs. So they're not as um, lackadaisical with the presence of dogs. Olive, come here. Just got to make sure she don't go out by the road. And uh, they're going to have to get used to my olive dog. Now a big white one over there because that's our, sh our livestock guardian dog. They didn't have livestock guardian dogs, so they're going to have to start to get used to that. <clears throat> olive! Get away from that road. Thank you. Um, but after a week or two, they'll start. I'll, and what I'll do is I will actually keep Olive chained up so that she's not you know trying to play with them or anything so that they get more at ease with her quicker and uh, they'll start to to settle down after about a week but you can see these are just the cutest little sheep so they were born in um, April around April and uh, my ram or March I'm sorry and my ram there um, is proving and showing himself to be a ram already which is is nice um, and, uh, but these guys look, you know, like, just like little fawns and deer out in the, in the woods. They've just got such cute little faces. <clears throat> but already I'm happy and pleased with their demeanor around me. I mean, for them to come within, um, 10, 12 feet of me this, this soon already is, is a significant, um, 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 advantage and, and good, good thing and to eat in front of me that's this is all wonderful um, now the cross is that I am going to obviously be breeding with these guys are going to be um, merino cheviot crosses um, I'm not going to uh, be using their offspring necessarily for fiber unless I sell the you know the use or whatever and somebody wants them for fire fiber I'll do that but we're going to be um, producing meat here um, with their offspring um, and I, I may decide to raise out a couple of them if I see what their wool is like as as many of you may know the merino is one of the softest fibers there's some people say the softest fiber there is out there and sometimes you know crossing the sheep is wonderful there are people that are against it because they want to you know um, conserve the breeds but I'm not in this for um, to have papers on sheep or anything like that. I believe in breed conservancy. That's not what it is. Um, but I also um, accept and um, um, desire a, 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 a better fiber as well. And let's be honest, folks. Sometimes when you crossbreed an animal, you just you just will get a better breed or a better fiber. <clears throat> and, and you know it's what works for you um, but yeah so um, very happy with this sheep uh, they had good color in their eyes as you've seen they're all dewormed again um, and um, I think they're going to really be a nice um, addition to our little homestead here and um, a year from oh let's see this time next year we'll have lamb for sale um, we will have a plethora of fibers. I go this week to get our Icelandics and uh, we'll have a nice little starter herd here of sheep, a flock I should say. Sheep is a flock. 
right, Abraham? Abraham's going to do a good job, make us lots of babies, and uh, make us some profits and some good food for our family. And most of all, he's going to make us sustainable. Right, ladies? And this is Stacy at Rosa Sharon Homestead in Wisconsin saying, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you guys were blessed by our adventure. Um, we did have a little mishap with my daughter and her ankle, but hey, um, such is life. And I just want to encourage you folks out there to get outside, get them hands dirty, get growing, get raising, and get yourself sustainable. God bless. Have a great day.